Everything is gonna be all right. So at any rate, should you have your chimera on? No. no. For the only product, what I'm gonna show you is exactly the same we have done before, and in fact, it's always it's gonna be already on the screen. I'm gonna look up a protein, myoglobin again. Get some height. At the Suez, algae, whichever you prefer. And uh, Homo sapiens, because just emphasizing what we have done before in this database. We have seen how, by default, this is what we get a result, a series of results that contain such aspects like the reviewed and unreviewed. All of them, or most of them, belong to Homo sapiens, and this is the one we're looking for. Now, because this is the default view of the screen, if you catch up with me, what I'm gonna recommend you do is to click on columns. If I'm going too fast, let me know. And then on the external databases, go to 3D structure and click on PDB. Okay, so if I go back, make sure that you are on the Unipro. Okay, you look up. Myoglobin, Homo sapiens. Now that you are on the results page, click on columns. Two so columns, 3D structure. <laughs> columns, database, 3D structure. So there, on columns, you go to the bottom of the page to databases and on 3D structure, PDB, okay? And then save. After that, you are going to get the new column to your right that indicates which of the, uh, these entries contain structure. So a very nice feature about this is not only you get a check mark, if you will, but also you get the code, the resolution, as well as the coverage, or that is how many of these 154 residues are there in the structure. This is totally expected since in uh, mammals, in eukaryotes, the first residue that it's usually a methionine, it's removed from the protein. But we can see some other examples of other things that happen in these databases. So this structure has been solved by X-ray, there's another protein, uh, this low density, low density lipoprotein receptor that has only been solved by nuclear magnetic resonance and it's only a tiny piece, whereas the whole protein is over 5,000, uh, sorry, 4,000 amino acids. The, the structure that it's known and deposited in the database is 45 residues, a tiny fraction. By electron microscopy, this structure and this other structure have been solved, lower resolution, but greater coverage. Uh, I, these uh, electron microscopy structures are a little bit more difficult to understand and to analyze uh, at an atomistic level. So I'm not going to cover them in this class, but at least you know now that they exist. And in general, in general, sorry, this type of methodology is better for these very big proteins. Now, we can 
straight up go to the entry on the myoglobin case and click on the code. And what that is going to do is take us to the PDB data bank, well, to the protein data bank in Europe, to this page that we already know pretty well. Okay, did everybody manage to do this? Mostly? Okay. Now there's plenty of things to explore here, some that are actually quite cool, other, others not so much, but I prefer to teach you how to use Chimera because Chimera can integrate a lot of these things together in such a way that you don't have to be browsing, navigating and getting tons of tabs in your browser. If you open Chimera, it's probably never going to look like this unless you customize it a lot. But you should be able to identify a couple of things. For example, on top of the screen, you should have the exactly same menu. File, select, actions, presets, tools, favorites, and help. Help, of course, is the most useful. And if you really need help, I like the way this is organized. And if you click on this, this is totally unlike Windows that opens a pretty useless help page. Mm -hmm. This actually takes you to the website. So if I click, for example, search documentation, I'm going to get this browser and I'm going to click, uh, what would that be? H bonds, for example. And it gives me actually very useful results. H bonds, find H bonds, view dog, several things. That is just on the search. If you go to the user guide, it actually sends you to the web page of the user guide. So this help I usually find very useful, but in general, you're only going to need that after the class when you want to do more things. File, uh, well, let me back up. As opposed to Microsoft Word type of applications, here each menu, it's really devoted exactly to what it says. In this menu of file, everything that it's in there, it's things to write, read, export, or save files. That's it, nothing else. The most simple for us, it's usually fetch by ID. When we wanna get a structure from the PDB, that's the way to go. So for example, click on fetch by ID, you get this window, and if you type 3RGK and press fetch, you're gonna get the structure, right? This works because I'm connected to the wireless network. Usually, unless you have downloaded this structure before, this, and you are not connected to the network, this might not work, okay? Now, next step. Anybody left behind? No? Okay. Selections. This selection, yeah, 3RGK. Now, following the same logic, the selection menu does only selecting stuff. So you can select items in the structure through the chemistry, functional groups, type of atoms. If you select residue, you can select things that are not part of a protein, such as the heme group, water, and the sulfate or standard amino acids. You can specifically select only amino acids. And on structure, you can find secondary structure, protein, nucleic acids, ligands, and so forth. For example, in the case of this protein, the heme group might be considered a ligand, but the same goes for the sulfate. So if I click on select structure ligand, what I end up selecting is the sulfates and the heme group. And notice here at the bottom of the screen, at this way. If you look down here, you get this magnifying glass highlighted in green, and it tells us that it has selected 70, uh, sorry, 57 atoms and 58 bonds. Here in this program, you can select just atoms or just bonds, but here in this instance, because I selected ligands, these two things were selected, and they are highlighted in green. You can change the color of the highlight. I usually leave it in green because it's easy to, it, I mean, it's hard to miss. I'm going to leave it like that. We can select by sequence, by atom, by attribute. We can erase our selection, invert the selection, select everything, and many, many other things. 
For example, I can, if I invert my selection, what's going to happen is that the selection is going to take everything that is not a ligand. So if I click here, now the protein, the water molecules are selected, but not the heme and not the sulfate. Okay, the selections are kind of logical like that. I'm going to clear my selection by going to select and clear. There. Actions works as exactly as it says. It's going to perform an action. So when there's no selection, the actions are applied over everything you, cannot, you have on the screen. So if I am to, for example, I'm going to just drag the structure away so that it's lost. I'm no longer see it on the screen. If I go to actions and focus, what the program is going to do is everything that I have loaded, bring it as close as possible to the screen. Because I haven't selected anything in particular, this is what I get. I could use it in a very specific fashion. For example, if I go to select chemistry and element, I can select the iron, for example, on the heme group. If I perform that selection and go to actions and focus, now the screen, the computer brings me as close as possible to that selection. Just an example. I'm going to clear the selection and go back to the default. You have seen how actions operate. These actions might seem like cut and paste or changing the format in Word, but in fact, they are more like changing the way things look. So in atoms and bonds, all of the actions include the way the atoms and bonds look like. I can make them to look like balls and sticks, spheres, wire, and so on. I can show the protein or the nucleic acids as ribbons. I can show protein surfaces, change the colors, change labels, etc. These actions are just how things look. This preset menu, in a way, is like an automated version of the actions. For example, click on presets and then on the first interactive one ribbons. And when you do that, the screen now suffers a couple of changes that we could have done in different ways, but now they are auto automated. Do the same with presets and then publication one. And again, changes are going to happen that we could have done by pressing different buttons and different options, but they just happen at once. Yes. Exactly as I said, presets, interactive ribbons, and then presets, publication one. No, pero el color de las, este, as I said, look, I'm going to close my file. I'm going to open it again, and I'm going to do exactly what I said, presets. There it goes. Then presets again. So these presets are actions and selections that you could perform on your own, but there, in that presets, they are automated. So you can access them quickly. I, haven't, I have never added my own, but if you wanted to, you just have to know what you want and then program it. Okay, everybody could do that? Yes, you sure? Select, clear selection. There's another way. I'm going to select everything with the menu. Everything is selected. If you press the key, the control key, and left click on anywhere on the screen where there's nothing, you deselect everything. So don't be surprised if you do that accidentally and suddenly you don't have a selection. That's what happened. Okay. Now, tools. Tools is the most complex, most rich part of this program. You have all of these options. Some are going to be fairly obvious, like viewing controls or structure analysis or even sequence. But others are going to be totally difficult to understand, such as higher order structure, MD assembled analysis, Amber, structure, com uh, structure editing, those are not going to be as obvious. And each one of them, as it's group under tools, it's also group for different activities. We, for example, have used sequence. Last class, using the Uniprot info, I showed you how, how we can use this structure and the information from the Uniprot to analyze the relationship between the sequence, the structure, and the function. 
There's others that we are going to try to use today, but I want to show you favorites. And favorites is pretty much like the name describes in a browser that will be your favorite website. But here, these are functions that can be found on tools or any other menu, but that we want quick access to it. So for example, the model panel, I'm going to click on it and we have now this model panel. The model panel, you can find it in my favorites, but also in general controls. There is the model panel too. It's only on favorites to be quick to access. On favorites, we also have side view. And that side view is exactly located to in viewing controls. All of these menus over here in viewing controls are these tabs in this other menu, okay? These favorites is the place where you want to put things that you want to use with one click or fast if you are already familiar with the program. But it's nothing different of any of the things that you can find over here. In fact, you see those icons on the, le on the left? All of those icons actually represent the same thing as in my favorites. The first one is the model panel, the side view, and others that I just added through the add to favorites toolbar button. This allows me to add these tools over here, and I, I already know what they are, so even if they don't have text, I can access them quickly. You don't have to customize it like this, like this but I do it because that's the way I like to work. Now, what is the use of these panels, the model panel and the side view? The model panel for me is the most useful because if you are going to visualize more than one structure, here is where you're going to get a list of those structures. So here we have only one, the 3RGK, the myoglobin. And you can perform several options, several actions by using these menus. Now, let's do this. I'm going to... Just as I said, I'm going to perform an action without selecting anything. So click on actions, go to colors and pick any color. You know what's going to happen. Everything in the screen is going to change to that color. So I'm going to pick what's the ugliest, ugliest, hot pink. There. Oh, I pink. <laughs> well, I don't know which is the ugliest. That, that looks pretty bad. Is there any uglier color here? Maybe the light gray. No, it's actually not that dull, but it's... Oh, let's see... Orange. Cyan. Orange? There. So as you can see, because I selected nothing, everything has changed. Now, go to your model panel, click on this ratio button for all, and now color, click on this button, color by secondary structure. There's no selection, right? So everything we do is going to work for everything on the screen. So if you click on color by secondary structure, we get this window with colors already assigned and they are going to be changed for the ribbons. And if we click apply or OK, the colors are going to change. I don't have the color by secondary structure. Did you click on all? Uh, Click on all, find the color by secondary structure. Now, I have to caution you. In this interface, when you have the option to click OK or apply, the difference, the difference is subtle. If you click on apply, whatever changes you have done are going to be updated on the screen, and this window will remain in place. But if you click OK, the changes are applied, and the window is closed. It's very subtle. So. I want to click on apply to get the changes. The window is still there. The changes have happened. Let's say I don't like what I found. I want to change it again. I want to change the color of the helix from this to something else. Well, I still have my window. I change it. And now that I like a color, the color I have, I click OK. The window is gone. This is a subtle difference. So don't be surprised if by clicking OK, you close the window that you didn't want to close. You're going to have to open it again. Because this protein is mostly alpha helices, or basically only alpha helices, the color is pretty simple. We can use that very same model panel window, and we should have a rainbow. 
And if you click on rainbow, you get this type of coloring. And if you click on apply or OK, you get exactly the same coloring scheme that we had before. OK, so it's exactly the same as the preset, but we had to go into the menus to find the option and apply it. So that's the difference between having a preset or having to go to the options in the control panel. Okay, now we did this other exercise to start analyzing structures within Chimera and it gave very interesting results. But first, go to favorites and click on the words reply log. This reply log, which I never understood what it's well called, it was called like that, bring up this little text. This text box is actually pretty useful because Anything that you do on Chimera that involves a calculation, it's written there. So if you get information from Chimera that you want to save, you can actually click save and save the file or just copy and paste. And for this example, this is going to be pretty useful. So keep it here, go to tools, structure analysis. And what we're going to do is try to calculate, well, no, we're not going to try, we are going to calculate the hydrogen bonds in this structure. Because it's alpha helical, there's going to be hydrogen bonds in every single piece of secondary structure. So click find hydrogen bonds. You're going to get this window, which for all I know, I have only changed this parameter. And this is just for the illustration purposes. Every hydrogen bond is going to be displayed as a blue line with a thickness of three points. Yours should read like one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you can change it if you want. It's only going to change the display, not the calculation. The parameters for the calculations are defined from here in this box, from these options, and the different colors. And this should be pretty much the same. Okay, remember, if you click apply, it's going to calculate the, what you are asking it to calculate, but leave that window open. If you click OK, it's going to close it. So I'm going to click OK. Now, in my reply log, I got this number, 428 hydrogen bonds. They are also mentioned here. But this, yeah, you saw? This update text gets changed very quickly. So if you didn't catch the number here, it's always there. I got 422. Yes. I seem to have noticed that only my, comu my computer gets 428. What number did you get? 422? I don't know. You don't know, you? 422. I got lost. You got lost? <laughs> Somebody using Windows? You what? 422? I don't know why my computer gives me different results. <laughs> Bring out your crayons. <laughs> so, tools. Structure analysis. Find hydrogen bonds. No, no, no. It's just a mere display. My, I have two menus technically, the one on the top and the one inside the application, but still the same. A structure analysis, find H bond. Yes? Okay. Yeah, did you use just this? Let me see. Show me the reply. I don't know why, so with the, any program, just like Word or PowerPoint, has a set of things that it does just when you open it. So maybe in yours, it's set up to calculate that even before you ask it to calculate. Yeah, I don't know why it's that, not really. Maybe it's a setting that doesn't matter. Did you get the hydrogen one? That's what matters. 
for example, just before the class ends, I'm going to close that and I'm going to show you something that resembles those numbers. In the presets, there is this preset for hydrophobicity surface. If you click on that, the program is going to calculate the surface of the structure. Now we can see here that we have a lot of data for that calculation. And the display now allows us to see the structure as if it was, as if we were looking at the surface, not at the atoms that make it up, but the surface. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh yeah, it's ugly as hell. But look at the information. I'm going to change the lightning just to make it a little bit easier on my old eyes. You can, but look at this, look at what we have. These colors at these extremes should represent hydrophobic and hydrophilic surfaces. If you see something like this, like the, like the sulfate, that probably implies that the blue is a, hydrophobic, a hydrophilic surface and the red is a hydrophilic one. Remember this side view control? Now that we have this side view, do you see these yellow lines? Click on the one on the left and drag it in such a way that it cuts the protein in half. And now we're able to look inside of the protein as if we were slicing it. And we can look at the cavity where the heme group is located, all just by moving these yellow lines. Mm -hmm. Well, just go back to focus so that you are centered. Go to this side view menu. Uh, I already put presets. Also, again, hydro. Okay, so you have a structure. Now go to the side view menu, side view window, and the side view tab, and move this yellow line. And what you're going to be able to do is like take slices out of the protein and look at the inside. Well, here's a trick for you. You can use the select menu, select the heme group. You can first focus and then set pivot. And by doing that, if you rotate the, sequ the structure, you are always centered on the heme group, but you are also up close to it, so you can analyze so what's going on on the side. Select residue, heme. Select residue, heme. That selects the residue, right? No. No? Ah, Yeah. And then, just the action. Focus. It's going to send you center to the image, and then set pivot. Now, because we are showing the structure as a surface, we shouldn't see anything, right? The surface is hiding it. But if you pick the yellow line on the left and drag it towards the protein, there's going to come a point where you make the heme group of visible. And because you selected pivot, you rotate the structure and it's going to be centered on that atom or on that molecule. Hmm? Just below focus. Now, this might seem easy or silly for this structure because it's a small, but when we start visualizing hemoglobin, this is going to be crucial because otherwise you get lost in the structure. Yeah, it's virtual because this is not real. It's like, okay, I'm Superman and I want to see your bones, so I'm just to use my X-ray vision. Why is the purpose of this? Because sometimes, or actually most of the time, these interactions between proteins and other molecules do not happen on the surface. They happen inside of the protein or going towards the inside. So this is a way to see those interactions and visualize them. Go, just if you rotate it and if you zoom in and zoom up, if you translate that molecule, that is lost. Now let's do something else for me before you go, guys. 
click on select first select HOH which is the water molecules and in actions atoms and bonds go for delete the, what, we are, what I'm asking you to do is quite literally selecting water molecules and erase them from the structure and after you do that go again to select select now the sulfate groups and again in actions atom bonds delete so we are removing the water molecules as, as well as the sulfate. Why? For the purpose of an exercise, because they are not supposed to be there and we cannot count on them. Okay? Now, the consequences of these two deletions are that if we go to structure analysis and find H bond, none of those molecules is not going to be able to make a hydrogen bond to this protein. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we calculate now the H bonds, these are only going to include H bonds between the residues in the protein and the protein and the heme group. So if I click OK, now my results are that if I remove water molecules, if I remove sulfates, now I have only 162 hydrogen bonds. I don't know, but I always get more apparently. Still, how different is this value from the one with water? It's almost a quarter. Just a few water molecules, I don't even know how many, account for a lot of these hydrogen bond type of interactions. That in a way explains why proteins are soluble in water, but not soluble in oils or any apolar solvent, because proteins make hydrogen bonds. Okay, okay so is everybody totally lost? I, I, I couldn't get the hydrogen bonds. Okay, what? Yeah, if you don't see the information, the reply log is the way to go. So where did you get lost? Okay, so you erase the atoms. Tools, structure analysis, find the H ones. And then just, I left the settings as default and I click apply. Now, can you all check if you have the same version as I do. I have 1.13.1. Are you sure? You still have the surface? No, I have 1.14. On Chimera, about? I got 1.14. I think it's the... 0.14? 14. Okay, so that may be a difference for the... No, account for the number of Chimera. So click. Yeah, you have the same face. Click OK. Ah, OK. Because your reply log is not what you see. Where is your reply log? Favorites? Reply log? You did it several times. Well, now you found it. See, yeah. no, I already closed it. But I get like the hydrogen bonds, like 10 Like a long list of the hydrogen bonds, yeah. So I'll update my chimera just to make sure that that is. Oh, wait, guys, you already closed your computers? No. No? Okay. There is something that I forgot. You don't want to do this again, right? Once you have this data, you want to save it. File. Save session. If you click on that and save your session, everything that you did, that is the way lo it looks now, it's going to be saved wherever you want, as long as you don't forget. So I'm going to close mine. I erase everything. And if I, if I find my session in downloads in my case, that is my session for today. If I click, if I right click to get this menu and open with and select Chimera, this should restore everything I did to the very same screen when I last left it. So get used to save with that so you don't have to repeat it. And if you didn't save it, ask somebody else for this file because it's gonna be transferable, okay? that you can email it or put it on Instagram and it's going to work. Okay, now you can close it. Have a nice afternoon. <laughs>